Welcome back to The Lemon Factor. I'm Chad, and in today's video, I'm going to go through with you my recent experience in e-tuning our project car, the 2019 Honda Accord 2.0 Touring. So recently, we installed a bigger turbo, an FK8 hybrid, specifically the 271 Kuro, and because of that, we needed to make sure that the car was properly tuned for that upgraded turbo. So I'm gonna to talk to you about who I chose as a tuner, what the e-tuning process is like, how much it costs, what you can expect. So if you're interested in either just hearing what my experience was, if you're interested in potentially e-tuning your car and you wanna know what to expect, then stay tuned. E-tuning is a method in which you can tune your car, have your car tuned by taking data logs of various driving conditions and sending them off to your tuner. The tuner will take a look at the data logs and all of the sensor information that was provided during those various runs, whether it's wide open throttle or steady state cruising, and they can make adjustments to your tune and send you back a revision of the tune and it's all electronic, whether it's email or through an electronic portal. But this makes it much, much easier to do, especially if you're not in the same geographical location as the tuner you want working on your car, or if you wanna do it at a more self-paced, as opposed to going to the dyno, spending a good part of the day there, having to pay for the dyno, pay for the tuner right there, and taking a lot of your time throughout the day. So there are a couple tuners out there, a couple well-known tuners out there for the 10th generation Honda Accord. And then there are plenty of tuners out there that are familiar with Honda vehicles, have worked either Honda Data or K-Tuner. The most well-known are IMW, Innovative Motor Works, Derek Robinson. The second one is Farable, so that's John Vega. And then Menolito, those three are the three that I see the most. So which one of those three did I choose to go with? I chose to go with IMW, Derek Robinson. It's apparent that he has a lot of experience with not only Honda vehicles, but specifically with the 10th generation Honda Accord. Does that mean that I don't think John Vega of Farable or any other tuner can do just as good of a job? No. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to support the channel, please consider not only giving it a thumbs up, but hit that super thanks button or purchase some merch. Become a member of the channel. There's three different tiers of membership. Take a look at what's offered. The top tier gives you access to videos that will not be publicly released. And don't worry, that's not gonna change how and what we do here on the regular channel. You'll just have some behind the scenes uh, information, a deeper look at some of the things that we're doing. So as far as pricing, I do see that they're all very competitive. The price is dependent upon whether or not you are going with a dual tune, meaning you know, your standard 91, 93 octane, as well as including an ethanol blend tune, which is what we have done. So once you've signed up with IMW, you'll receive an introductory email in which you will be given access to uh, Derek's platform in which you will upload uh, your data logs and download the next revision of each tune. There's also an area where he can put comments as well as yourself. However, he does ask that if you have anything uh, more than a sentence or two or one question that you email separately. What I do really like about Derek's setup is that he takes the revisions in order as they come in. However, there is an additional charge if you want to be given priority service. Now, I'll tell you right now, my experience here, maybe it's off season, maybe not. I don't know. Your experience may vary, but the turnaround time for when I upload my data logs to the next time I receive the next revision from Derek 
is usually two days. I'm sure it depends on how busy he is. And even when I did send him questions in a separate email, he was very responsive, usually the next day with his response. The first file you're given by Derek is based on the modifications that you have on the car, whether it's FBO or FBO plus an upgraded turbo, something to get you started. He then will ask you to do four different runs. So you send them off, you'll have a couple exchanges back and forth, and towards the end, he will ask you to do a fifth type of data log, and that is a wide open throttle in sport mode, but not manual uh, shifting, in a full automatic shifting, from 40 miles per hour to 110. Make sure you have access to a flat road or relatively flat road that you can repeatedly do these runs on safely. The 40 to 110 is something that for some of you, you may not have access to safely do that. Some oh, I forgot, merch. So I mentioned this in the past, I recently created an Etsy store. I may change that in the future, but I do have some t-shirts up there. There are car enthusiast t-shirts, some are funny t-shirts, some are, are more specific to our two project cars, but please go take a look at the Etsy store. I really tried to price them reasonable, competitively. It is free shipping and it's nice, soft cotton. So how many revisions, how long does it take? In my experience now, it is going to run probably less than 15, we're 90% there, but it's gonna be more than 12. So somewhere right around there. And again, that is with our 91 octane tune. I'm in Denver, that's what I have access to. And the ethanol blend tune. Make sure you devote time to it. It's a lot of driving and it's a lot of time spent doing that. And then you send it to them, send it to them, and then you get that email that gets you excited either the next day or the day afterwards with the next revision. So it definitely can take some time. If uh, I like the process. I like the fact, which we all I'm sure would enjoy this, that every revision just gets a little cleaner, a little smoother. And when I say smoother, what I mean by that is it doesn't feel like there's any spots within the power band that have more fuel than it should. There's no stuttering. There's no uh, pausing uh, with the acceleration. It's very linear with the progression of power. So great, the car feels phenomenal. I can't, I can't wait to see what the car can do both on the dyno and on the quarter mile track. With that said, I think we're done for today. Thank you very much for joining and until next time. <laughs>